Hello once again YouTube, uh, this is Hunter Search of the Brawler Cafe, and as I mentioned at the end of the Buyer's Guide, throughout the Buyer's Guide actually, uh, today we are going to be starting my analysis uh, of basically everything in the first card set, Battle Brawlers. Uh, so today we are going to be going through um, our first faction of characters and evolutions. We are going to be doing the factions in the order that they are sorted, sorry about that, the order that they are sorted within the card list, which is alphabetically, which means today we are going to be starting with Aquos, which, you know, that's fitting because uh, that is my main attribute slash faction has been since the very start. Um, but yeah, let's get, get into this. Um, we're also going to be going in alphabetic order on the Bakugan because, well, uh, that's how they're ordered in the card list. <laughs> it's just, we're just, that's just, how, that's just how we go. Okay? Okay, good. So, first up, we have Drago. Uh, this is the Bakugan that you are going to be getting in your uh, arena. I mentioned in the Buyer's Guide that the Bakugan you get in the arena is crap, so uh, we should already know where this is going. Um, so, uh, before this, I did a bunch of calculations figuring out... Um, what exactly, uh, what exactly, like, the average card, card, uh, stat values are. So, the average across the board comes to about seven stats. Uh, what that means is if each hundred in the B power is one stat combined with its damage stat. So, in the case of Dragonoid, it would have four, four B and three damage, giving it a total of seven, which puts it right on that average. It has pretty average uh, shields, as, uh, core types as well. Uh, shield and fist doesn't really lean in any particular way, um, and it's just like it's just dead average. It is just dead average. However, it's a bit worse than average because um, it has 400 power, and 400 power is typically below average. The average power tends to sit around 500. Uh, so being at 400 power, not great. Um, and he only has one Evo, Titan Dragonoid, uh, which is a rare. Um, and this this thing is not great. This is a six cost, twelve thousand six. Now, um, an evolution I consider not very good because there are like things that have the same stat line with effects, with very good effects, is something like Fent uh, Ventus Titan Maxtor Ultra which is 4 cost for 808. This is barely any better at 1206, and you can't evolve until turn 6, and it doesn't do anything else. There's nothing else going on with this card. Um, there's, it's just it's just a big stat ball. Like, this, this is what I meant. Um, you're stuck with a below average power, completely average, nothing special about it, Bakugan, until turn 6. <laughs> it's not great. Um, it could become better in the future if it gets uh, new evolutions, but for the time being, Aquos Dragonoid is a complete dud, not something I can ever recommend. Alright, you might have had a bit of a music jump there uh, with with that, uh, with that the cut that just happened, uh, but diving into our next Bakugan is Aquos Fangzor. Now, for those of you who watched the Buyer's Guide, you already know I sang some high pri pri praises of this card, so what's it all about? So, uh, I showed you that a bit early, but whatever. Aquos Fangzor has 601 for stats, so it's uh, dead average in overall stat total. However, it is very specialized. Um, 600 is the highest B power on the base form of any Aquos Bakugan, um, and 600 is pretty high up there. There's only um, four Bakugan in total with 700 or higher base power that that are able to be played right now um so so that's good uh the low damage is not fantastic but that's something we can deal with because it's going to be winning battles and the rest of our guys can can help um make up for that um now it's evo only makes it better at four cost uh, it becomes a thousand b power Three damage, which is not a big damage boost, but it's something at least. And when you play this, draw three cards. So it's this is fantastic for any mid-range or control deck. Um, 
1000 B power is exactly where you want your evolutions to be sitting because a thousand is generally where the good evos all sit and not a whole lot goes much higher than that and the stuff that does go higher than that tends to be pretty high cost uh so a thousand is like the perfect number to be sitting at so it goes from this very good b power early game to uh the exact b power that we really want to be hitting with our evolutions as well um it's going to replenish our hand so it's fantastic for mid range and control decks in that way so just all around fantastic bakugan one of my talk recommendations for Aquas Bakugan. Now, before we really continue any further, I want to address something that's sure to come up. Um, no, I am not covering every Bakugan here, in here. I'm only covering the ones that were actually released in Wave 1. Uh, some of these other Aquas Bakugan have started to come out in Wave 2, like Cyndius Ultra. Um, Nilius is supposed to be one of the Wave 2 core singles. Um, same with Serpentis as well. Um, and some of these haven't come out in any capacity at all. Um, so why am I not covering those other Bakugan? Well, it, it's very simple. Only the Wave 1 Bakugan, only the Bakugan that were released in Wave 1, none of the Bakugan that aren't... The Diamonds do have evolutions in... All the Diamonds from the Waves that are releasing during Set 1 have evolutions in Set 1 as far as we can tell. As far as we can tell, there aren't any more Diamonds beyond those uh, ones in the time span of Set 1. Um, but diamond evolutions, uh, as you'll see as we go through these videos, tend to be very bad. And and without evolutions, without any evolution cards, the Wave 2 and Wave 3 Bakugan are practically worthless. Um, having to operate off your base stats requires you to be a really, really strong Bakugan. And there's a couple that we will touch on in some future videos. Um... In particular, Darkest Nilius Ultra and Ventus Trox Ultra are two that I will be talking about. But um, I will save thoughts on just the character cards of the of the Wave 2 and later probably Wave 3 Bakugan. Uh, because there seems to be at least three waves within Set 1. I will save that for a future video. I will talk about those at a later point. But if it's not something that I feel can be competitively viable at this stage with Set 1, which is what we are reviewing... Um, I, I'm not going to be talking about them. Uh, so if you have that Cyndius Ultra or that Nilius or, or that Serpentis, um, and you want to know how to use it, the answer is you don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just, that's just the answer, uh, speaking right now, because we just do not have evolutions for them. And a Bakugan without evolutions has a very low ceiling for potential. Um, okay, so with that said, let's move on to Garganoid Ultra. I talked, uh, this one is an exclusive to the Garganoid, Aquos Garganoid Ultra starter set. Um, this is one that has some potential, but let's get into it proper. Uh, Garganoid Ultra comes with a Fire Fist and a Helix. Uh, those are pretty high-end cores, um, so that's actually a pretty good start. 305, so it has slightly above average stat total, but it ends up with a low power, uh, overall. And then it's evolution. At five costs, we have a 906 with the victor ability to copy the next action you play. This is obviously very powerful and the stat line on that evo is very solid. But I feel that this needs a very specific deck to work. It's not the kind of card like say, hey, Titan Nilius, uh, that is extremely powerful and will win battles in and of itself. This needs to be winning battles first. Um, it's effectively, like, for winning battles, like, when it's first coming out, it is effectively a 906 vanilla that you paid 5 for. Um, but if you can get a win in with it, then it becomes extremely powerful because it's enabled you to do something really strong. But then, but again, this does need quite a specific deck so that you can take full advantage of that ability and also to make sure that you can... Uh, get that ability off in the first place. This is a good Bakugan, but you will need to build pretty specifically for it. Um, and probably build a very, like, control-oriented deck. Uh, because control is where that kind of ability will shine the most, to be honest. All right, next up, we are diving into uh, the big boy, the Shun's, Shun's Guardian Bakugan, a partner Bakugan, whatever. Um, this is Aquos Hydorus Ultra. Um, this is one of the Bakugan that has the most, uh, evolutions at three in set one. 
Uh, the only other Bakugan that has that many evolutions in set one is Pyrus Dragonoid. So, big deal. <laughs> big deal, boys. Uh, so, actually, I think Darkest Nilius also has that many evolutions. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, so, let's dive into this proper. This is 404, so slightly above average. Uh, B power isn't like a pretty low 300. It's a more average out. So, stat line is quite good. It has double shield, so specialized uh, towards shields and dust. That helps with its low B power a lot because shields uh, boost B power primarily. In addition to that, um, this means that due to this, um, due to this, uh, it fits very nicely into specific core based decks, uh, specifically any shield based deck. Uh, now there is another Aquos Bakugan that is typically going to be the better pick for those decks, but this is still something to keep in mind. Um, especially if like a mono Aquos shield deck ever becomes a reality. We're not quite there yet, but honestly we're pretty close because we already have this and another double shield Aquos Bakugan. Uh, so we're not too far from that potentially being a reality. Now, uh, let's get into his Evo since as I said, he has three of them. Okay, so Evo number one, we have Diamond Hydra's Ultra. Nine costs, 1,508. That nine cost is really, really bad. Like, really bad. Um, Hyper Hydra's Ultra. This is an ace rare. Um, Diamond Hydra's Ultra is a, just a rare. I, I've been forgetting to mention rarities. I'll get back on that. Don't you worry. Um, but it's 705. So that 700 is not what we want to be seeing out of an evolution. That is a bit too low. Uh, but like... Uh, Titan Garganoid Ultra, it has a very powerful Victor ability. You may play an Aquos card with cost 4 or less for free. Now, this is a ruling that I got confirmed a bit back. Um, in the case of Everett Ray, uh, which is a hero card that starts at 6 cost, but every for every card you've played that turn, its cost is reduced by 2. Um, if you've played at least one card that, that turn and you get Victor with Hyper Hydroros Ultra, you will be able to play Everett Ray for free with that ability. Uh, so basically every worthwhile Aquos card is four cost or lower. So this is very strong. The only one I can think of that isn't is uh, is Titan Garganoid Ultra's five cost evolution. Uh, but that that's, that is not really what we want to be seeing. And our third is Aquos's uh, Evo card Bakugan Elite. Uh, among the Bakugan elites, um, each faction got one evolution card and one hero. Obviously, Aurelis didn't get a hero Bakugan elite, so there's 11. Um, so, uh, its stats are quite big, 1,406, but it has a huge cost of 8, and this basically kills the card. Um, 8 is not realistic, and when you have a victor ability... So with victor abilities, you have to think about these coming down the turn after you'd first be able to play them because it can be quite difficult to get that victor ability off um, if you've spent all of your energy on evolving the Bakugan. Uh, now, he does, as I said, he does have very, very big stats. Uh, so that's going to help him get that off. But 8 cost is not good and it doesn't really help you set up anything because of that. So honestly, if I was running Hydra's Ultra, despite the problems with its low power, I would still just roll with Hyper Hydra's Ultra because we're getting basically the exact same thing out of its Victor ability. Because as I said, uh, only Titan Garganoid Ultra is a worthwhile Aquos card that costs more than four. Um, so like, I would just stick with Hyper Hydra's Ultra if you're going to be running Hydra's Ultra. This is a good Bakugan. Uh, don't get me wrong, this Victor ability is extremely strong, and despite its low power, you can still make this work. Its base form has decent stat line, it fits into a shield deck, and those shields are going to help make up for those low that low power. Uh, this is a Bakugan that can work. It does, have, it does have some important flaws, though, to be aware of here. Next up, we move on to the core version of Aquos Hydrorus. Now, uh, core Aquos Hydrorus does not have such a balanced uh, stat line. With 206, it brings in a shield and a helix. As I mentioned before, helix is a pretty high-end core that you can do quite a bit with. Like, helix is by far the most versatile core type in the game. Um, now, it's 206 is pretty bad on base power. Um, however, this has very high synergy with pirate strategies, which are able to change the victory condition to being determined by the damage rating. Uh, so very high synergy there, 
and likewise its evolution has very high synergy with that uh so uh first we're going to be talking about diamond hydrous quickly uh this is more realistic than the diamond hydrous ultra that we just saw uh five cost 1010 not too bad this isn't something that i would write off completely to be honest um that isn't awful um but honestly, I like the hyper evolution so much more that I that I I wouldn't even touch this thing. Um, like it does have the edge of like always having that 1,000 B power, but its 10 damage uh, is something that Hyper Hydorus also accomplishes. But let's get into Hyper Hydorus. So Hyper Hydorus is a three cost 510. When you play an action on this, it gets plus 200 B. Now this has very very high synergy with pirates fury based strategies because fury based strategies are going to want to burn through your hand with low cost cards and flow obviously has synergy with that because you want to play low cost cards and uh to combo off with flow and of course hyper hydrous synergizes with both of these elements um making all of these lower cost weaker actions more potent um it's also very potent in in mono aquos because mono aquos turns uh, flooding waters into a plus 600 for one cost and hyper hydorus turns this into 800 um turns tides into 600 uh turns wave slash into 1200 very good card overall and adding on to that pirate synergy hyper hydorus has even more synergy with the out wind condition strategies than its base form with a huge 10 damage and if you can win battles with this which that ability makes it very likely that you'll be able to uh you're going to be dealing a lot of damage to your opponent this is a very aggressive card but very very good gets a very high recommendation from me moving on to the next we have mansonoid ultra with the chaos picture instead of the aquas picture and even the core mansonoid here uh when it should not be but regardless let's get into it um this is uh, not one of the more impressive ones on the Aquos lineup, let me tell you. Oh boy. Okay, so we have a little vanilla boy with 403, uh, completely average stat line, um, magic shield, and normal fist. Uh, the magic shield is pretty valuable, but um, with the quality of the evolution, the singular evolution that we're going to get into, um, it is not worth it for that magic shield. There are much better sources of that magic shield core And of course without the double fist it doesn't really fit into that sort of deck either um, Hyper Mansonoid Ultra apologies for the blurry picture uh, We should be able to get the details here because there's no real text to read anyways uh, Two cost so it comes out fairly early, but 804 is not a great stat lineup. That is not a very good stat lineup Oof. Um, Yeah, I don't know what can I say but yikes? <laughs> um, this is just it's just big vanillas, except it's not even like high cost vanilla, which gets it like over a thousand stat line. It's an under a thousand relatively early game, not very impressive damage, uh, not hitting that thousand B power threshold. It's just ugh, uh, there's nothing really going for it. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing to see here. It's just. No, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing. Uh, tragic, tragic. What a tragic fate. What a tragic fate. Okay, on to the next. Uh, Nilius does not exist. Pegatrix does exist, though. Okay, so let us get into Pegatrix. So, Pegatrix is the other shield boy I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is true to form with Pegatrixes. Pegatrixes tend to be very focused on... Uh, assisting a specific core type of deck. Uh, in this case, it's a shield one. Um, on a shield core, uh, Pegatrix starts with completely like standard 502 stats. Like that's the most standard stat lineup you can possibly get, but it's not below average in any way. And uh, when it's on a shield core, which it brings in two of, and you'd want to carry this uh, spe specifically on a deck that's running majority or all shield cores becomes 605 uh very high above very highly above average that is just slightly above what typical relic stats give you uh so very very potent for that sort of deck um it's evolution comes out at four cost which is a bit on the late side but not too bad um and on a shield core it goes up to 903 which is not fantastic stats for uh that that um 
for that high cost of an evolution. However, it becomes a 1311 on a shield core, which is incredible. Very good stat-wise. Like, you really only want to be using all close Pegatrix when you're in a deck that's, like, using all shield cores. Or, like, five shield cores. Um, because Hyper Pegatrix is really, really weak when it's not on a shield core. But when it's on a shield core, it's fantastic. And also consider that that shield core is going to be increasing power more. So it's probably going to be sitting around 1700, 1600 most of the time. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is fantastic for uh, shield based decks. You basically want to go for that with this. Um, that's why that's why I was saying earlier that uh, there's a better option for shield based decks than Hydro's Ultra. Uh, but with one more guy that you could really make a make a mono aquos uh, big shield deck. So, you know, uh, that's something to keep that out for on in the future. I can speak. Okay. Next up, Core Serpentis is not a real card yet. Uh, Serpentis Ultra. Um, okay. This is an unfortunate circumstance of a mechanic not being very good. So, Serpentis Ultra has a very bad stat line of 105. Uh, here's another Magic Shield Fist. Oh, God. If only this could actually do something. So, it's 105 because it brings with it the benefit of two Frost Strike. What does Frost Strike do? Frost Strike increases the costs of your opponent's flips. The problem, flips suck. <laughs> flips are really bad. And the best flips, the most playable flips, are the ones that make themselves free and thus completely <laughs> ignore Frost Strike. So Frost Strike is basically a useless mechanic at this point. But okay, okay, maybe it has like a fairly early game evolution that can address this problem. Nope, its evolution is five cost, and even after evolving at five cost, it still has only. 500 B power. Its damage is pretty respectable at 8 and upgrades Frost Strike again to 3 Frost Strike. I can only respect the dedication. And this kind of, um, this is kind of really bad for Serpentine's Ultra's future because how the evolutions go is it goes in order from lowest cost to highest cost. So Hyper, Titan, Maximus. So that essentially means that any further evolutions that Aqua Serpentine's Ultra might receive in the future would have to be even higher cost than five. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's not happening. It would need to be something completely ludicrous to be worth it. And like, even that I'm not sure would save it. Um, it's just, ah, this is tragic. Very, very tragic. Uh, Serpentine's Ultra, unfortunately, Goes in the dumpster. Complete trash. And then we have... I believe this is... No. Yeah, this is the last one. Okay, we have Trox. This is not... This is not a great note to no end on, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, Trox is not very good either. Um, Trox is a 207. Brings a magic shield and a shield. And so those are good for boosting B power. Um... But, like, if you want this sort of thing, uh, Hydorus uh, Core is just much better, especially when we get a peek at the evolution little Trox is bringing with him. Um, Aquos Hyper Trox is a one cost that all it does is it increases the power by 200. That's all Hyper Trox does. It's not a very good evolution, and even then, it only becomes 400. This is not going to survive into later game scenarios. And when it comes to those uh, Pyrus strats, um, Hydorus is a much, much better option because its uh, evolution synergizes with that strategy way, way better. Uh, so Trox does not really have a place. Um, it has more upward potential than uh, Serpentine's Ultra, at least, because, well, uh, its only evolution is a Hyper and it's one cost. So, you know, very easy for it to get get better evolutions that could improve it in the future. Um, but that is it for the Aquos Bakugan. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, sorry about any hiccups with the background music or whatever. Um, and next time on, I believe it will go up either. 
yeah, it should be going up Tuesday, next Tuesday. I will be talking about Aurelis. Um, Aurelis has a lot of good stuff in it, uh, especially, and it needs to be at the cost of losing one of your factions for your deck. Uh, so we'll dive into that on Tuesday. See you guys then.